Okay. Just walk back. We're going to have to cover a little bit of territory if you want to do it, Justin. microphone on me no just talk loud okay uh, this is uh, our first segment this year 2021 uh, at the Route 66 Prairie and as we look out uh, we see the on even on this beautiful Sunday morning we see the uh, traffic rolling by and there's the incessant sound and noise from the highway which we of course always have to contend with uh, here we are actually at a drainage in our 10-acre prairie. This 10-acre prairie wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for I-55. And prior to that, uh, Route 66 prairie, uh, one of the alignments actually ran right more or less to the center uh, of the part of the uh, out-shaped triangle here. And then before Route 66, uh, there already were, of course, uh, well, almost 150 years ago, I guess, I, I'd have to count that, there were the railroads. So the prairie wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for this infrastructure, this modern infrastructure that today we sometimes complain about, but without we absolutely couldn't do. And then there's agriculture, this 10 acres would just be a little farm field. Uh, if it were in, in the usual uh, crop production. And all that's part of our history here. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about soils today, and even on this 10-acre track, there's an amazing diversity uh, of soil features, soils and soil features. And uh, we were fortunate uh, a few years ago to the tragically uh, suddenly passed away that our next president, uh, who was a soil scientist, uh, gave me a brief tutorial out here uh, on the soils. And because I was curious, uh, there were so many different aspects to it. And uh, I actually had him put it in an email, sent it to me, which unfortunately was lost when I had a major computer breakdown. So I have to reconstruct this, but uh, I'd like to de dedicate this actually to Dave Raw, the soil scientist, our past president of NAGS, the National Area Guardians, because we're the caretakers of this 10-acre prairie. IDOT, the Illinois Department of Transportation, is the owner of this site. So we work together uh, on this, restoring it uh, where it's needed, to original prairie, uh, which did, invi uh, did survive here in places. And, and here's just an example of what good prairie soil would look like. It's friable, it's crumbly. Of course, this is a little on the dry side. If it were wet uh, this early in the season, since it's been a little bit cool, it would be a little bit more sticky, but it is still fairly crumbly. And uh, we have another interesting soil feature here. We have lots of holes, lots of holes. And then we have different uh, mounds. Here again, you see the holes. And we have, and you can see a little soil there. We have lots and lots of prairie voles, uh, meadow mice, prairie voles, rodents, and they help to till the soil. Uh, so that keeps the soil uh, loose for the prairie plants. 
But then we have another creature out here. And, yeah, that's, that's right, right? Uh, here would be one of those. Some of the towers are much, much larger. Here, here's a fresh one. Here's a fresh one. You can just still see how glistening it is. And those are prairie crayfish. The prairie crayfish, I don't know if I, I face uh, quite a little bit away from the sun here. The prairie crayfish um, need water around the gills. And we have, now well, maybe a million, but maybe more. I don't know. We have lots of prairie cray crayfish here. And uh, what's interesting about them? Well, you could harvest them as uh, Indians or Native Americans did and the early pioneers did. Uh, you could make a nice gumbo dish from them. Uh, pretty tasty, I've been told. Uh, but a little bit harder to uh, get in good numbers, so we buy them from the bayous of Louisiana. It's easier. Anyway, a prairie crayfish, what do they do? Uh, they build their burrows down to the water table. And as it gets drier in the next few weeks, uh, they will burrow down and then they bring the mud up. So they're churning the soil. And they've done this for the last 10 to 15,000 years, ever since the Ice Ages. And that explains why we in this area, the Southern Till Plain, this is the Southern Till Plain Prairie, so it's Southern Till Plain soils. And that explains uh, to some degree why the early soil scientists could not find any loess deposits. Loess was windblown soils off the Mississippi, uh, Illinois, uh, uh, glacial uh, uh, drainages. And uh, that's of course a rich soil uh, that makes for great agriculture. Well, what happened to the low soils out here on the Southern Till Plain? They finally figured out that over 10,000 years of activity by these uh, huge numbers of prairie crayfish, they tilled the soil down to three feet, maybe even to six feet occasionally, uh, and so they constantly churned the soil till it got mixed up. No malos, part of the soil. Uh, it certainly didn't hurt the soil, made it rich. Now, this was considered poorer soil till just a few years ago, but with increased drainage now, these southern, southern tilt plain soils actually have some years outproduced the so-called rich prairie soils just to the north of us. Right here in Montgomery County, we've had higher production per acre on corn and beans both, uh, and that was due to improved drainage, because these soils can stay wet for so four to six months out of the year, uh, because there is no sub drainage, it all is surface drainage. It's just very slow for the water to get away. So it's a wet prairie environment, and uh, uh, that has partially made for these unique soils.